Natural selection is a process where individuals that are better adapted to their environment are more likely to survive and pass on their genes, meaning future generations will get those advantageous alleles. In today's video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about natural selection to ace those AQA A-level biology exams. Let's get into the video. Okay, so let's talk about AQA A-level biology natural selection. Well, first of all, what is natural selection? Well, natural selection is a process where advantageous alleles make an organism more likely to survive. And that will mean that this organism will pass on these advantageous alleles. Now, remember from previous videos, an allele is a different version of a gene. So in this case, it could be a color of fur that blends in with the surroundings a little bit better or in, for example, with a beetle, it could be the fact that its shell blends in with, say, the bark or the soil that it lives on, preventing it from being eaten by birds. So that organism is more likely to survive and pass on those brown coloured alleles, for example. Now, natural selection acts on variation that exists naturally within a population. This variation is caused by mutations. Remember, a mutation is a change in the genes. Now, mutations are usually harmful, but occasionally you get one of these mutations that means the organism is better adapted to its environment, and that can give them a survival or reproductive benefit. And finally, to sum up, natural selection increases the frequency of certain alleles in a population. So how does natural selection work? Well, let's look at it with the example I gave earlier about beetles. Now in the first diagram, we can see there's variation and that's created by mutations and things of that nature. But also during meiosis, there's things like crossing over and independent segregation. I will be releasing a video on that in the future. So there's this natural variation in a population. We can see we've got brown beetles, we've got purple beetles, and we've got green beetles. But you can see the, the environment they live on is brown. So the next step is overproduction. Now ecosystems are unable to support all individuals within a population towards an age of reproduction, which means that there's competition for resources. Then we have selection, and this is where the more well-adapted individuals are more likely to survive. So we can see the brown beetles here are not being seen by the birds, which they rely on a very good colour vision in order to determine prey and food. So they're more likely to survive, whereas the beetles that don't blend in with the environment, i.e. The, the green and purple ones, they're getting eaten by the birds. And finally, we have reproduction. Well, because those brown beetles were left, they're then going to mate and reproduce, and that's going to lead to greater numbers of brown beetles in future generations. Now remember the brown colouring is based on an allele that has been selected for and that is natural selection, the natural selection of certain alleles over others. So how does natural selection, which was discovered by Charles Darwin, lead to evolution then? Well we have differential reproductive success which means some organisms are more likely to survive than others. We gave the example of the brown beetles being well camouflaged in an earlier slide. Now, a greater proportion of alleles in the next generation will then stem from the individuals that have the greatest reproductive success. And individuals from the next generation are then more likely to survive and reproduce because they have those advantageous alleles. So that passes on those specific genes to the next generation. Now, it's important to know that a gene codes for a protein, and proteins can give things like characteristics like colour or enzymes or things of that nature that can really affect the survival of an organism. So genes code for proteins. Now, this leads to the beneficial allele increasing in frequency in future generations. And finally, over large periods of time, this leads to evolution. Now, evolution is how a a species changes over generations, over time. So what are the adaptations that arise from natural selection then? Well, they can be anatomical adaptations. For example, a camel's hump, which is an energy store because they're packed full of fat. Or it could be a giraffe's neck, which allows it to reach leaves at the top of trees. It could be physiological, 
which is where, for example, a hedgehog has ears that are sensitive to low frequencies, so they can hear insects like ants, for example. And we can see we've got a little hedgehog in the bottom right corner here. They could also be behavioral adaptations. So an example here is that hedgehogs roll into a ball for protection or the fact that they hibernate to conserve precious resources like glucose over the winter because they can reduce their metabolic rate. Now there's three key types of selection that you need to know about for AQA A-level biology. The first one is disruptive selection and this is where greater allele frequencies of extreme phenotypes are selected for. So we can see that in number one here where the red line is representing a greater number of organisms around the mean value. Now the blue line is showing disruptive selection where the extremes are favored. Now number two is stabilizing selection. Now this is where we're gonna find greater allele frequencies for the middle phenotypes. So a key example you need to know about is birth weight in babies. So really big babies have a reduced survival chance and really small babies have a smaller survival chance, but average sized babies have the greatest chance of survival. And finally, we have directional selection. And this is where the frequency of alleles goes to one extreme. So we have a greater frequency of one extreme. And a classic example of that is a giraffe's neck. So giraffes with the longest necks are more likely to get food, survive, and reproduce. So that's why we see giraffes with those really cool long necks, so they can reach those leaves at the top of acacia trees. Now, another example you need to know about for AQA level biology is antibiotic resistance. So you would have bacteria that are resistant to a particular antibiotic, having a great, a really high survival chance, but if they're completely unresistant to it, they would have a low survival chance. And we can see the blue line here, we have an increase towards one extreme. So let's get into some exam practice now. Question one, scientists measured the relationship between birth mass and babies surviving less than four weeks. The scientist also recorded data on smoking in relation to this. State three conclusions that can be drawn from this data. And this question is worth three marks. So pause the video, analyze this graph, analyze the question and answer it, and then we'll go through the answer. So you'd get your first mark for saying survival increased as the birth mass increased. And we can see here, baby surviving less than four weeks was really high when they had a low birth weight. But as we went to around three, four kilos, we had a greater survival chance. And it seemed to be at its best around four kilos there. You get your second mark for saying survival was decreased with smoking. Now, if we look at this graph here, we can see the dotted line is mothers who smoke cigarettes during pregnancy. So the higher the line, the greater the amount of babies not surviving four weeks. And then in the solid line, we had mothers who did not smoke cigarettes during pregnancy. And all the way through, those mothers had greater survival rates. And finally, the effects of smoking was relatively similar at all birth masses. So that's identifying here that the solid line doesn't cross over the dotted line at any point there okay so it's a very neat relationship we've got there so let's go for another question then number two use your knowledge of selection to explain why adding antibiotics to cattle feed has become banned in many countries and again this is worth three marks so pause the video have a go at the question and we'll look at the answer so the answer is for one mark you would say this would lead to directional selection. And this would mean that antibiotic resistant bacteria are more likely to survive and reproduce. And for a final mark, you would say there'd therefore be a higher proportion of antibiotic resistant bacteria in future generations, which could cause real problems as antibiotics can't be used sustainably in cattle because it will just lead to this situation where we have resistant bacteria over time. Now, the key to this question was identifying that it was asking you to use your knowledge of selection. So that's what told you you had to talk about directional selection there. Okay, guys, that's all we've got time for today. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.